What's going on y'all? So in today's video, I'm going to be teaching y'all how to set up and use a Google API in Node.js. More specifically, we're going to be using the Google Fit API. Now, this is going to require quite a few NPM packages, and it'll also be implemented in our Express server that we're going to be making. So we're going to see your steps from Google Fit in the console log. And uh, yeah, you're going to need Postman and a Gmail account. And without further ado, let's get into this. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a project. So I'm going to do touch. I'll just do YouTube fit.js. And now I'm going to install all of our NPM packages that we need. So I'll do NPM I. Now it's going to be a lot, so it'll be a, first one's going to be express, Google APIs, request, cores, URL, parse, query, string not query parse body parser and axios and let that happen and while that's happening i'm going to be setting up our express server so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do const express is equal to require in express and let's do const app is equal to express and now let's do a simple get request well, we need a port first actually so let's do const port is equal to one two three four and we'll do app dot get slash ting and we'll do a request a response and we will do res dot send and let's just send over yeet and now let's do app dot listen port and i'm gonna do a console oops console.log and inside here I'll just do Google fit is listening on port and let's just put in the port right here and let's shave that alright let's run the app now so I'll just do node youtube fit.js and we'll see Google fit it listening alright we should fix that right now let's just do Google fit is listening alright so if you don't have Postman, go ahead and install it. Um, but if you already do, open it up, and we're gonna make a simple GET request to localhost port one two three four to slash ting, and we'll see that we get yeet back. Cool. So now let's put in all of our other npm packages that we installed. So this is gonna be real simple. Right underneath our port, let's just do const curly brace Google is equal to require. Google APIs. Next one will do const whoops const request is equal to require require request. Next one const cores is equal to require cores. Const URL parse is equal to require URL dash parse give me any recommendations for some reason I don't know why but const let's do query parse is equal to require I feel like I'm misspelling this okay there we go const require query which one which one which one query string with the dash and let's do const body parser require body parser and last one, const axios is equal to require axios. All right, now let's use the cores and body parser. So it'll just be app dot use. Oops, cores. Next one, app dot use body parser dot URL encoded extended true. Next one, app dot use body parser dot json cool and let's just save that all right so before we do continue we're going to need to create a new project in our google apis developer console so that we can access their api and get data back i'm going to assume you already have a google account to work with if not go make one and then come back to this part so i'm going to open up a new window right here and i'm going to google search uh, google dev console and I'm going to click the first link right here that says Google console developers google.com. All 
All right, cool. So if this is your first time ever being in this uh, developer console, you're not going to see anything here whatsoever. But you will see right up here, uh, create a new project or select a new project. I'm not quite sure one of those two. Um, so I'm going to create a new project. So go ahead and click this nav bar right here and then click the uh, drop down button to open up this modal and click new project. And I'm going to give my project a name. So I'll just call it YouTube. No, I can't do YouTube. That's not allowed. Uh, Gfit YouTube. That is allowed. No, oh, I can't be changed later. Oh, well. All right, so let that happen, let that create itself. Shouldn't take too long, there we go. And now I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to that. Cool. Most likely once you've created your project, you're gonna be taken to this page right here which says you have not enabled any APIs. So click the star button right here to enable APIs and services and it'll take you to the library. Now, Google search, well, not Google search, just search up uh, Google Fit, and you'll see this first one right here called Fitness API. And just go ahead and click Enable. Let that take its time. And while that's happening, I'm going to click this nav bar right here, and I'm going to go into our OAuth consent screen just to make sure everything is proper. we got to set that up. So since we don't have a G Suite account, we're just going to go with External. I'll create it and now let's give our application a name so I'll just do G fit YouTube so creative all right so now I'm gonna add a scope I'm gonna add uh, this one this one I feel like a kid in the candy shop I'm gonna get this one I'm gonna buy some of this I'm gonna take one of these is there anything else left cool and I'm just gonna add them and please do not add an application logo because I tried that out earlier. I try to I try to be funny and I I was gonna try and add uh, this this image for application for my application logo, but Google said that you can't do that unless you have verification. So I'd rather not have Google ask me why the hell am I trying to put Squidward on my app. Anyways, I digress. So once the scopes have been added, just go ahead and click save. Actually, I'm gonna before that hopefully it doesn't redirect me away I did redirect me away now yeah, whatever it'll be fine all right so we set up our OAuth consent screen now let's set up our credentials so in the nav bar just click credentials right here and click this plus sign that says create credentials and want to grab OAuth client ID and since we're making a web application I'll name it G fit YouTube once again and we don't need anything for authorized JavaScript origins, but for redirect URIs, we're going to do HTTP colon double slash local host colon 1234 slash steps. And I'll just copy this one more time and I'll just get rid of the steps. And I'll click create. Let that take its time. So we have a client ID and a client secret. So I'm just going to copy this client ID and I'm going to paste it into our project. Let's get rid of this terminal. We don't. We just need that much of it. That's fine. I'll just put it right here as it commented out, and I'll grab the client secret, and I'll just put it right here and comment that out as well. Cool. So you just learned how to set up a project in the Google Developer Console. So now let's use the client ID and client secret to set up a OAuth to um, client. If that made any sense. So I'm gonna get rid of this res send. And I'm going to rename this ting from ting to get URL ting. There we go. And I'm going to add a curly brush right here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a const OAuth to client is equal to new google.auth.oauth2. Oh, no, not that. Capital O, capital A, OAuth2. There we go. And the first one is going to be a client ID. So I'll just copy this bad boy right here. And I'll just paste it right in here, but in a string. And next one's going to be client secret. And I'll copy this as well. And I'll do a string and put it right in here. And last one is going to be the redirect, uh, the link where it's going to be redirecting to. So I'll just do link to 
redirect to and the link in strings gonna be http colon double slash localhost let's do 3000 well not 3000 one two three four slash steps let's add our scopes now so i'm going to make a variable called scopes con scopes and i'll set that equal to well i already have all of these uh copied so i'm just going to paste it right here and you can just pause the video and just type it all up and now I'm going to make another variable called URL and I'll do OAuth to client dot generate auth URL and I'm going to do access type we'll set that to offline no, not offline, it's offline and we'll do scope to be scopes next one I'm going to do state json dot stringify and I'll do callback ah, I gotta get rid of that blurb callback url rec dot body dot callback url and the last one user id and I'll do rec dot body dot user id cool alright so let's use our request package that we installed so right underneath our generate auth uh, URL, I'm gonna do request, and I'll do URL. I'll do an error response body, and I'll just console log error if there is an error. Well, actually, let's do uh, make it more clear. Error, and now let's do error. There we go. Next one console log status code so we can look it up if we ever have any issues response and we'll do response dot status code just like that and now this is where the real this is the real magic right here res dot send url cool let's test out if this actually works so go ahead and open up your postman again and i am going to send a request to slash get URL ting and if we send it we'll see that we get nothing back because we still need to refresh our application so let's do that right now no due to fit hopefully we didn't get any errors it's taking its time there we go now let's reopen up postman and I'll resend the request there we go we have our URL and if we were to open this up It'll open up like this. It'll ask me to choose an account. So I created an account just for this tutorial. And we just authenticate. It'll ask me if I'm able to get permission for them to see our to see my data. And now it's gonna say can I get steps? So let's add this step of the project. Before we do actually add that route, I just want to show you guys something. If you look in the URL right here, it it says steps state code. And you see this code right here. Basically, we're going to be using this code to grab our access token and our refresh token. And then using those tokens, we can grab data. So if you blink, you'll miss it. Now I'm just playing. Let's make our next get request. So I'm going to do app.get. And this one I have to call slash steps. And I'll do request, response. And right in here, the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to be using our next two npm packages, which is going to be URL parse and query parse. Basically, it'll grab the URL from our browser and parse it. Uh, so I'm going to do const query URL is equal to a new URL parse and rec.url. And now I'll do const code is equal to query parse.parse query url dot query and dot code so now if I were to console log code and reset our application let that take its time and now I'm going to resend our request open up this link wherever it is right here and I'll open it up right here
I'm gonna try and avoid using as little console logs as possible because this uh, method is pretty taxing. Not taxing on the system, it just takes so goddamn long. Cool, so if we go back into our app, we'll see that we have our code that we got from our URL right in here. Huh, we got it again. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of this console log because we don't need it anymore. And now I'm gonna actually copy this snippet right here because we need that once again and just paste it right underneath the code and I'm gonna do const tokens is equal to alright let's use async await instead so const tokens await oauth to client dot get token and code so I'm not gonna console log it but right inside of here is our tokens um, you know what, yeah, let's, let's actually console log. Let's just see what we get. So console.log tokens. And it's not just tokens that we're going to get. We're going to get a lot more than that. So I'm going to reset our application. Go into the Postman. And I'm going to open this link up again. And go into that first one right here. Allow. And now if we go back into our application. Any second now, we should see... All right, we also need to allow this too. Okay, now we should see it, I think. Ah, oh, there we go, okay. So we can see inside of this console log, we have a access token, refresh token, our scopes, ID token, expiry date, all the good jazz. That's the data that we want. Now we're gonna use these tokens using an access request and get some data for us, for our steps. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a res.send and I'm just going to send a simple hello to the front end. So what happens is that when we get redirected to localhost slash steps, it doesn't get stuck in loading hell and just keeps loading over and over and over again. And now I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable, let step array. This is going to contain all of our array of objects of data that we get. I'll do a try catch block. Now it's console.log e if there's an error. And right inside of here is I'm, I'm going to do an axios call. So it'll be const result is equal to await axios. And the method is going to be a post. There we go. And headers, real simple, authori authorization. It's going to be bearer plus tokens dot tokens dot access token there we go oops we don't need that semicolon there we will add a comma right here and I'm gonna do content type application JSON and I'm gonna give it the URL that we're trying to access for our Google Fit API so I'm just gonna copy it right here you can pause the video right now and now I'm going to set a comma right up here I'll do data and this is where basically we're going to be setting our aggregate by to set the data type um, estimated steps how long uh, how long of interval do we need for our data before we do continue if you do not know what aggregate data types are Simply, it's data types responsible to read health and fitness information aggregated by time or activity type. So here, for example, we're going to be aggregating by time with estimated steps within 24 hours of a date range. Alright, so don't worry if that made no sense to you. Um, it's a confusing concept to get around your head, but once you actually do it a couple times, you'll be able to figure out what's happening. So right inside of here, I'm going to do aggregate by and I'll add an empty array and inside of this I'm going to add an object I'll do data type name and I'm going to do com.google.step.count.delta and I'm going to give it a data source ID and I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy from here it's, it's too long, it's too long it's basically for estimated steps but it's too long and I'm going to add a comma right here we don't really actually need a comma because we're done with this. So I'm going to add a comma down right in here. So this is where we're going to be talking about the uh, date range and estimated time I'm doing within 24 hours. So it'll be bucket 
by time and object duration millis and I'm gonna do 24 hours so that's just gonna be eight six four one two three four five and I'm going to add a comma. This is going to be a date range um, of the estimated steps that we want, how many, how many days of data we want. So in my case, I made this email account in April, well, March 31st, and I got data done and made for between April 1st and the 3rd. So I'm just going to do start time millis, and I'm just going to copy over that number which is April 1st, I think 11.59.59 p.m. And I'm gonna do end time millis. And this is just gonna be for April 3rd at 11.59.59. Cool, and I'm gonna save that. All right, let's test out if this actually works or not. So there's an extra console out here. I'm gonna just comment that out and right underneath here, I'll do a console.log result and let's just make this a little bit bigger and I'll just run the file let's go into postman open this bad boy up and now I've logged in let's see if we get the data so this is a huge object now oh, there we go so data bucket object object so let's go inside this object object so let's minimize this bad boy right here and before we do that, let's uh, let's set step array to be result. So the way to access um, data dot data bucket is real simple. We're just gonna do step array is equal to result dot data dot bucket. And now we're able to use step array with this um, result anywhere inside of our um, app dot get. So I am just going to make another try cache block right here that's going to be responsible for helping us um, show all of our data, all the loops and stuff that we're going to require. So right here I'm going to do a for of loop for const data set of step array and I'll just do console.log data set and let's see what we get. Restart dish bad boy. Go into Postman, we start it up, we make it a little bit bigger. All right, so now we have a little bit more data, so we need to go inside of data set and then inside of point. All right, so to do that, I'm gonna make an inner for of loop inside of this for of loop right here. So I'll just do for const points of data set. And since we're trying to go into data set, so I'll just do data uh, set, I think it's data lowercase set. And let's test it out if this works or not. Console.log points. Let's run Postman one more time. Make this bad boy a little bit bigger. Let's see what we get. Oh, wait, did I even, did I even run it? I didn't even run it. Oops, I have to run it again. That would make sense why it didn't work. Okay, let's see. Console.lost is not a function. Oh, whoops. All right, let's try this again. Come on, give me some good news. Okay, so now we're inside a point. Now we need to go inside of value. All right, so we're going to make another for of loop, an inner for of loop. And I promise this is going to be the last one. So it'll be for const steps of what oh, that don't look right okay never mind I, I don't know why it was white that was so weird okay so for of so we need to go points dot point I think let's see here so it goes yep point yep point all right cool and now if we do console dot log steps dot value we should technically get my steps for the past two days. Hopefully. Fingers are crossed. Everything is crossed, I should find out. Cool, so we get data for 
this I don't even know what the hell that even means I'm, I'm assuming that's April 2nd and this is for April I have no idea why are there four do you have an extra console log here oh I do oh that's why okay I have so many console logs it's ridiculous make sure to comment out your console logs all right let's try this again let's see what how much data we get we should only get two I think Oh, there we go, two. So on on April 1st, I think, I ran, I walked 12.62, and on the 3rd, I did 12.25. Wow, that's so little. Oh, it is like a pandemic, so. Cool, so you can see we got some data. You should pat yourself on the back. This was a long tutorial. So what did we learn today? Well, we learned how to use Google APIs we learned how to make a project inside of it, how to make calls to the API in Node.js, and get step data. I really hope this tutorial helped you out, and I would really encourage you to go back to the console, the dev console in Google API, and enable a different, completely different API, and try to figure out how to use it, and implement it, make a quick application off of it, or even just console all the results or whatever you get, just to be able to learn this more and get better. I really hope you enjoyed. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one.